children for me they have to see me as a teacher sort of model that because um lots of children put the teachers on pedestals like these people that don't make mistakes the people that get everything right all the time guarantee every january i will write the date the wrong year for the first two three weeks and know i'll see a hand go up like this Mr. Hunt, you've got the date wrong and I'll, I'll change it straight away. And it takes me about a month to get that right. But um, sometimes, I mean, I do that by accident, but sometimes I'll purposely make mistakes. And then when I do make a mistake, instead of going, oh, I've got it wrong, I'm being really frustrated with myself. Um, we work as a team, as a class and go, oh, what should we do next? How do we do this? And I think if children see this modeled, see the teacher that's not supposed to make these mistakes, make mistakes, be open about it and show this resilience, then they'll in turn do it in the classroom. And I think it's, I think it's so important that uh, as teachers, we do that. And also that we're okay with it because we're asking the children to have a growth mindset, be resilient and be okay with making mistakes. So we have to be, have the same mindset as that we're expecting the children to have. And that's not something you're going to get in a curriculum, is it? It's not something that comes in a scheme of work. So that's around no. kind of classroom pedagogy and how we as a profession need to really underpin the knowledge that we give children, as in the taught knowledge, with all of the other kind of subconscious learning and how I feel about myself as a learner. And that idea that failure can be a really positive thing because through a failure to do something, you learn and we see failure often as a very negative word but actually mm. you don't need to change the word we just need to change the context that we produce or we give that word to children in part of the computer curriculum is looking at the inner workings of a pc so rather than show some slides on the screen and click through and say this is a hard drive this is a this is the ram this is a processor um i put a post on a facebook group a local rams bottom facebook group and asked for has anyone got any pcs that are broken that they could donate to school so um, I got eight PCs delivered to school yesterday morning. We had one PC between four kids. I sent a message to all the teachers in my school asking, has anyone got any little screwdrivers, those little tiny ones you're getting crackers? So they all brought, everyone brought some screwdrivers. I took a picture to make sure they go back to the teachers that gave me the screwdrivers because we get very protective over glue sticks, pencils, and now it turns out screwdrivers. And what we did, uh, um, I showed what the inner works of a PC is. We looked and we discussed what, the, what this does. This is the uh, processor. This is the RAM. What's the difference between a RAM and a hard drive? Because we save things all the time, but that's where it goes. And I said, all right, guys, here's screwdrivers open up and find some some of that stuff that we've just been talking about. So they spent two hours, and honestly, they could have spent five, 10, 12 hours, but they took things apart. Mr. Hunt, we found the, we found the motherboard, Mr. Hunt. What's this thing do? Is this is a CD drive. Okay, so if we look at, this is the, when we put it in, when we hear that little buzzing noise of the CD being read, that's that little light thing that moves up and down. So that reads the CD, so they could physically see it. When we talk about saving, they had the hard drive, so we could look hard drive. And honestly, we talk about STEAM across the curriculum, the speaking and language, the, the communication, the collaboration, especially because of the past two years, they've not had as many opportunities because we couldn't get as close to each other. It was It was palpable. So much I ran to the head teacher's office, said, Mrs. Taylor, you need to come down and see these kids now. And they absolutely loved it. But um, the kids went home and then they ran outside and said, we've been doing this with screwdrivers. We've been, doing, we've been taking apart PCs now to them. They literally just tinkered and played for the whole afternoon. But actually, the learning that happened in that lesson was probably one of my favorite lessons I've done. When I first began teaching, <clears throat> I, um, I remember doing my plans, do my plan, my PPA. I would spend hours on these plans. And then for the first, you know, first part of my career, I would have my lesson plan. And I'd know after about 15 minutes, I need to start talking about this part of the lesson. So don't interrupt me because I've got, I've got an hour here. So I need to get through this. And then actually the best lessons are the ones where you just don't even look at that. That the kids direct you and then because i think if you if you cap the destination you cap their learning if you let the destination be free you're not you're not putting a cap on where they can go to and i think over this like like uh, craig said there's no time to change like the present especially after what's happened recently so we should really there's, a, there's been a definite shift but you've got to have the confidence of a teacher to to put that plan down to talk about I'm going to mention belly button of a chicken again, like we said before, but um, you've got to have that confidence. And if you do, as a teacher, you will see the learning just explode because you can you can physically see it. And I think it's having that confidence and also the, the senior leadership at your school and uh, the ethos of your school as well. You've got to have that confidence to be able to do that. And I think since my mindset has changed that way, 
I, honestly, I think I've learned more from the children I teach than the other way around. I, the reason why all these amazing things that have happened in my my journey, in my uh, in my career, has been because of the kids that I've taught. It's because of me giving them go on, let's go and do this together, go on a journey together. And it is, it's a journey together. And um, so, yeah, definitely, um, you've got to have the confidence, and uh, you know, you might it might not go well. There's sometimes you can come completely off piece, and it could not go quite well. But then, that that is the journey. It's not the destination. 